Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to Stock Trading Pro. We have a ton of stuff to going on today and you want to make sure that you have a notepad out today because we have a ton of the best stocks to buy right now. The stock market has been raging higher for the last five weeks. Tech stocks are the hot area. We're going to stick with those. There's no reason trying to go and figure out some obscure stocks that you never heard of. They are trending. They have good volume and tech stocks are near breakout levels. A couple of them need to pause such as AFRM. We're going to talk about that in a second. But the larger cap tech stocks, which have been in play for the better part of almost two months, are still in play. Now, there's an old quote on Wall Street that says the trend is your friend until the end when it bends. And we're going to stick with them. Look, there's a big level that the market needs to get through right now. The stock market and specifically the S&P 500 is resting right at a level that we called out at the beginning of last week. And if we run through the data from where the market ended last week, it ended positive. There was some really amazing price action last week, including coin stock, PayPal stock, some really big moves to the upside. Uh, but we're kind of right now, it's a really big uh, level because the CPI data is coming out later in the week. We're going to have a better picture of what the Fed's going to do for the next announcement. Is it going to be half a basis points? Is it going to be three quarters of a basis points? Has inflation cooled off a little bit? We all know that energy has taken a dive. I'm sure everybody going to the gas station right now is finding that it's a lot easier to put gas in your car. But pretty much everything is still high, including eating out or any kind of things related to food. So we got a lot to cover today. It's going to be rapid pace. I hope you have some good questions for me today. If you have any further questions after this video is over, make sure you post them below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, stick around. We have a ton of stuff to talk about today. Okay, so I want to thank everybody for being here with me today. Uh, it's really important that we get the week off started. So we're going to talk about trades for this entire week, but we want to start off with some ideas. The best stocks to buy now over the last 30 days, as well as the best stocks to buy over the last two weeks. So I want to break it down for you right away. I want to get right into it. You're going to be needing to take a lot of screenshots today because the stock market has been raging higher and there's a big list of ideas that are strong. The question now is where are those stocks relative to their optimal entry? That's going to be the big question right now. So uh, let's get right into it. There's really no other way to put it. Uh, we want to first start talking about some of the stocks that have been uh, really strong over the last month. But here's the level that we're talking about. You can see the futures are actually up a little bit here this morning, which is pretty impressive. You can see where we closed last week. You can see where we are right now. We're up 16 points. But what I want to talk about is the S&P 500 and where we are. This is the level that we're talking about. We've obviously broken this downtrend. We're seeing good, clean, consistent pushes and pauses, and we're resting right at this level. So we're actually up a little bit this morning. The challenge we're going to have this morning is which stocks are still near the optimal entry and which stocks are clearly buying opportunities, but we need to wait for them to pause. And I'm going to give you the first stock that I've received a lot of questions on this weekend, which is AFRM. So I want to jump into that one first, uh, and we're going to take a look at the uh, risk reward as well as the target. So if we zoom this out a little bit, you can clearly see AFRM finally got through this 30 level, which is pretty important. And you can see that it's pretty obvious up here, this $48 to $50 level is pretty good. But now the stock has actually rallied. And I just want to really bring this in because this is part of the trading that most people miss, quite honestly. So in eight days, the stock is up 44%. That's a lot of price action in just eight days. That's an average of 5% per day over an eight day. Actually, it's more than that. It's actually higher than that. It's almost an average of 6% per day over the last eight days. So I want to give you an idea of what I'm looking to see happen in AFRM this week. I love the stock long. I do believe that the next exit or the next profit target in AFRM stock is right around that $48 to $50 level. But the risk reward is a little bit out of whack right now. So you have to think to yourself, if I buy right now, am I setting up a trade that has a better risk reward than just one to one? What are the probabilities of it going up right now if I buy it? And right now with that 46% rally, 44.5% rally over the last eight days, the odds of it just going straight up to 48 are smaller. So I am planning to build a position this week in AFRM. I'm actually expecting the stock to pause for at least two days before it makes that run up into that 48 area. So this is exactly what we're talking about here. You can see the percentage. Now, that's the first one. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about are which stocks have been the hottest stocks to buy over the last two weeks and hottest stocks 
is kind of a little bit of a pun there because we're obviously talking about the solar stocks. The solar stocks, little help from Washington, doesn't matter why it happened, but they have been holding the bid after that big gap to the upside. So price action in the solar stocks have been a really good group to keep an eye on. Now, they were doing exactly what AFRM was doing, which was they actually went too far too fast and the risk reward was not there. But now the solar stocks have cooled off a little bit where they paused giving us a better chance to have a better risk reward. And now we're looking for the next move in those stocks. So let's actually take a, a look at a few of those. And again, you want to probably write these down, ENPH. And this is what we're talking about. These two days here were just an absolute explosion. You can actually see it's up $4 again this morning. So I'm going to give you the list. Now, one of the most important things to remember is, and we go through this a lot in our boot camp, which actually our new boot camp is starting today, is finding the right ideas, but then we call them out. And some people are like, well, I don't want to trade a $40 stock because I want something more volatile. And then we have other people in the community say, well, I don't want to trade a $300 stock because I have a smaller account that I'm trying to grow. If you've never traded the solar stocks before, their price action is pretty good, especially when they're in play, which those stocks are in play right now. And there's a big window of price. They're, they're all the way down from, I think, $20 all the way up to $300. So I'm going to give you the list right now, and you can pick and choose which ones match your personal resources. So obviously, ENPH, Run, Sun Run is another one. You can see that's in the 30s. It's actually up 3% now as well and looking to get beyond this breakout level here. <clears throat> JKS has really not performed with the rest of the group. So if you happen to be trading it, it's not really showing good relative strength. We have been trading SPWR, which again, you can see a nice breakout there. Um, and the other one is Nova, which has actually been in that group as well. So you can see that's a smaller list of stocks and a very small industry group that you want to pay attention to. But what's interesting about that and those particular stocks in general, those are the top stock picks for me right now. They're in my list and they're part of the group. But that's the industry group of that particular sector. We're actually going to go up a little higher in that sector right now and go straight over to the technology sector because technology has pretty much carried the market higher. And Apple stock has been a really big part of that. Apple has just been in a beautiful push and pause type price action over the last almost two months. So we're going to first take a look at Apple. We're going to take a look at a little bit of news, specifically Coin, which has earnings tomorrow, which had really big news last week and whether or not that's setting up a new trade for this week. One stock I do want to point out today that has one of my favorite trading patterns is Tesla stock. Generally speaking, what I'm looking for, again, as I mentioned before, an AFRM stock, what I'm looking for in Tesla stock today is the stock has rallied and it's rallied really hard after earnings. First, I want to show you the stock and then I want to give you an idea of what I'm looking for. So on the Tesla side of things, you can see since earnings came out over here, it's had a really good clean push, a pause, a push, and the reward potential here was pretty good, but the risk didn't match it. So now we've actually pulled back for a couple of days. If you take a look at where we pulled back from, we went from 936 down to 859, and you can see we pulled back a little bit. So here's the game plan for what I'm looking at in Tesla stock for this week. It's been a really nice two-day pullback. The market's actually trading a little bit higher this morning. I actually like Tesla stock long for this week, but, and this is an important thing, I want to get a better price because I want to expand that potential reward. So if we take a look at where Tesla is right now, despite the fact that it's trading higher right now, I actually want Tesla a little bit lower right around this breakout level. So I'm really looking at around 840 to 850. So it's up a little bit higher right now, but I want to get my price so that my risk reward makes sense the way I trade. So I'm actually looking for Tesla to push down just a little bit more and then between that 840 and 850 level is where I'm looking for. So yes, I'm actually looking for just a little bit further weakness in Tesla. Have that be the better price that I'm looking to buy the stock and then look for a new long. Now, obviously, if we're going to talk about Tesla, we should be talking about some of the other electric vehicle stocks and whether or not they're in play, specifically the Chinese electric vehicle stocks. And they really have not been in play at all. So we want to head on over to there and we're going to take a look and just break down what would make me want to buy those stocks if they get back in play. And I will tell you specifically, uh, XPEV, one of the top stocks in this group that I have been trading. But what's kind of interesting about this is it's very clear whether or not the stock is bottoming out. Let me actually get this uh, moving average off the screen because you really need to start breaking these down into different um, types of patterns. You can see the pushes and the pauses are really pretty clear. 
So what we really need to see here in, in uh, XPEVs, we need to see it get above 25. And sometimes you need to break it down to lower time frames to see the real price action that matters. And it can be a little bit more challenging over here. So we're going to write that down for this week as well. XPEV stock, if Tesla does show some support, uh, some buying pressure later in the week, XPEV stock, for me personally, again, they need to get over 25. If they get above 25, then I'm going to be looking to risk only $3. So a $3 risk on that trade means that I'm looking for at least a $9 or $10 move up in my favor. But here's the important thing. Now, again, these videos are for educational purposes. This is my game plan for the coming week. If it gets above 25 and I'm willing to risk $3, that means that I'm generally speaking, look around 34 to 35 as my next target. And ironically, uh, it actually is right where the risk uh, reward matches up because you can see the last time we got up to this 35 level, several sellers came in. The last time we got up to 35, sellers came in. So we're looking for 25 with a stop just below 22. Now, what's kind of interesting about that and what's kind of exciting is I want to be clear about this. I'm not bottom fishing. I'm looking to take advantage of relative strength in the group if buying pressure comes back into that area. So now there's earnings coming out this week as well. We're going to take a look at that. I told you I'm going to, it's Monday. We want to get ready and hit you really hard. There's a lot of stocks to buy actually talking about this uh, this week as well. So if we're going to take a look at XPEV, that means that we need to have LI in the list. We need to have NEO in the list. And you can see that they're all in relatively short term moves to the downside. Hopping on over to the, uh, let's say, other electric vehicle stocks, Lucid, which actually had earnings already and pulled back. Now, Lucid is kind of still stuck in this box. And I want to just bring this back because this is very, very important. You can see it's pretty much stuck in that window and it needs to get above 20. And you can see Ribbon, right? Ribbon actually has earnings coming out on Thursday. So here's the big thing I want to talk about. And then it's the number one question that we get from people that come into our community is, OK, Pete, this is fantastic. I understand how to manage the downside. I understand that trading losses are a business expense. I understand that if I want to go into the stock market, I need to have an edge. I get all that, right? I'm managing the downside. I'm taking my losses, but I'm still not making money. This is the big thing that you need to learn. And this is probably the number one lesson. And I promise every single person that comes into our community the same thing. After 30 days of working together, your biggest problem will be ending up holding your winning trades longer. And I, and I promise, because that's all the conversations we have in the community after somebody's been with us for at least 30 days, which is understanding the market conditions for when you have a better deal on the table. When the price action is telling you, yes, everything right now is great. Let's hang on to those. So we just showed you the um, solar stocks, which have been very strong. Now we're talking about the electric vehicle stocks, and I just gave you a big list of electric vehicle stocks. So you might need to pause this video, go back and watch that one more time. You need to take all of those stocks and put them into a watch list. So what I mean by that is you'll have your own list like I have over here, like this is a universe, and you can see there's a whole bunch of other ones. So if we go into the EV stocks, you might want to take a snapshot of that. We can actually add LCID in there as well. This list right here is a list of stocks that... When that whole stock, that whole list of stocks is green and green over time, whether it's over a day, a week or a month, that means that order flow money is flowing into that group. And you and me should pay attention because smart money, the deep pockets, the hedge funds, the banks that are pushing the market around, they have their attention on that group. And so should we. So create that list. I'm going to make sure you go over this one more time. You take this list over here. And that's the criteria. So now we just mapped out what I'm looking at in Tesla this week. We looked at I'm looking at XPEV this week. We looked at AFRM this week, right? Now we're going to hop over. We're going to go up that pyramid a little bit further. And we're going to go into tech stocks. There's been a lot of hot tech stocks over the last three or four weeks. The semiconductor stocks especially have been very, very strong. They might need to cool off a little bit. Again, we might need to see a couple of days pausing. But I want to give you those stocks and specifically the ones that we've been trading the most, and specifically myself, has been AMD, but we have AMD and NVIDIA and TSM. So we're going to take a look at those and make a little bit of, yep, there you go, Curlin, exactly. Um, so we have AMD. And what's interesting about AMD, and you can see, look at how clean and beautiful this price action is. We're coming into a little bit of a resistance here. Let me actually pull this back a little bit right here. So you can see there's been a lot of price action right at this price, which is right around 108. 
So if we're looking at AMD, let's first give you the list, AMD and NVIDIA. So you can see both of them are right there. Now, they've been really strong. So if we use our, let's go back to AMD, and we use that same um, indicator that we were talking about before, and even just go right here in this price action. We're talking about a 23, almost 24% move over seven candles. So that's basically seven trading days, almost 24%. And we have resistance just above from where we are right now. So what does that set up for a trade in AMD? So remember, this is really where that you separate yourselves from, from people that say stock market is difficult from I own the stock market because I know what I'm doing. It all comes down to preparation. So for these technology stocks that I'm looking at right now, and specifically AMD and NVIDIA, this is going to end up being a two-step trade. Two-step because of how far they've recently gone. Two-step because there's sellers just above at this price level but there's a lot of room to go if it can take off through there. So this is an important part of trading. For me personally, this would not be full share size. This would be a smaller piece on my initial entry. If it gets up to these levels and pauses and can't get through there, I don't have on my full share size. But if it can finally get through that level, I have a starter position on. And then if it gets through there and pauses above that level, and I'll show you NVIDIA again, then I will look to pause and look for the next profit target. So very important. So NVIDIA, I think, has a better example of that. But you can see right here in AMD. And then the next level is up here in the 120 area, which is roughly $20 away. And then you have this level right here. We have minor resistance right here, minor resistance right here. But even if we just go to those that level right there, we have to get through here, which is around 200, then 226. So what we're looking at in NVIDIA stock and AMD stock is they have a little bit of selling pressure just above where they are right now. But above that, both of them have roughly $20 worth of profit potential if they can clear that most recent or upcoming resistance level where sellers did something significant last time. So now you have a choice. Do you trade the other stocks that have room to go right now and are at the optimal entry? Or do you trade those hot stocks that have been pretty much on fire but the risk reward and the and the resistance is a little bit lower. For me personally, again, let's let's use Tom as an example. If Tom was sitting in my trading floor in New York City and we were trading together, I would say, Tom, those are great ideas, but I'd probably be setting alerts above that resistance level and don't do anything until they can prove they get there. If you feel the need that you want to have a little piece on that, make sure you have your minimal share size. Put that trade on, and now you're going to read the tape in that stock without that much risk because it's your smallest entry. For me personally, if it was a newer trader, let's just say for argument's sake, Kunaj, right? I hope I said that right. Uh, Kunjal, I'm sorry, Kunjal Patel. Let's say Kunjal was a new trader in my community and came into our trading floor. I would say, all right, what we're going to do is we're first going to set alerts at those prices, and then you pull them up and make a decision. As you gain more experience, then maybe you could do like Tom is doing and put on a, a small piece first and then learn how to read the tape. So I want to give you a list of stocks, especially in the technology area, that last week were fantastic opportunities. The volatility in these stocks were absolutely amazing, but they rallied a little bit too far. Some of them are near the optimal entry. Some of them are too far. And I'm going to walk you through exactly what I plan to do in these stocks this week. So obviously coin, we've talked about coin, right? Coin had news last week, and you can see coin actually rallied from 60 to 116. So let's put that in context. Coin had amazing price action, almost doubled in roughly four days. Now we got some more news coming out on Coin this week, which we'll break this down right here. So this week we have Disney, Coinbase, BNTC, Riven, and other stocks to watch this week, right? That's very important. So Coinbase specifically is earnings coming out on Tuesday as well as Disney. Now, that's exciting, right? Obviously, we're going to talk about Roku in a second right now. So Coinbase exploded on news, right? There was a news story about um, a joint venture partnership. Absolutely exploded. Now, you have to be thinking to yourself, how much risk would I need to take in a trade in Coinbase after that news with upcoming earnings? There's a lot going on in that stock right now, and especially with earnings after the close tomorrow. or uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure if it's after the close. It's on, scheduled on Tuesday. So here's the thing with coin, and here's how I'm going after coin right now. Coin has been absolutely amazing. We've been trading it on a short-term basis pretty much every single day in our community. And I'm going to give you one other stock as well, which is SQ. SQ has been a stock that we've been actively trading pretty much. Now you can see SQ is actually at a, at a level where sellers 
came in. So SQ needs to get through 90. Oop, I'm sorry, can't see that right there. SQ needs to get through 90, right? So both of those stocks are in play. But if we go back to coin, fully recognizing that it just doubled in a very short period of time and earnings are coming out on the 9th, which is tomorrow, what is the probability of an obvious trade in coin right now? It's still digesting that news after the stock more than doubled in just about a week and earnings are coming out tomorrow. So I want to give you a heads up. I want to give you a trading insight that we we found quite a bit over the last, let's say, six months, really 2022 for that matter, trading into earnings reports. So in other words, buying a stock ahead of the earnings report has been very, very hit or miss. We how, Raise your hand if you've seen dozens and dozens of stocks this earnings season where they've reported good earnings and the stock went down, reported bad earnings and the stock went up. We saw that last week in AMD earnings were not fantastic. Airbnb earnings were not that fantastic. They both opened down and both rallied and went up in the other direction. So what we've found a little bit more uh, easier and quicker to make uh, reliable profits has been to wait for the earnings reports to come out and then use order flow and tape reading techniques that we have. So I am not trading holding overnights in coin between now and the earnings report. I am waiting for it afterwards. I will be on the day trading side of it because the stock has just been absolutely amazing from a volume of volatility and a reliability perspective of that volume and volatility. But personally, I'm waiting for coin to report earnings after. You just saw that Disney actually had earnings coming up. And I want to talk about Disney and another streaming service. So Disney has earnings coming out. And you can see actually right here uh, on August 10th. Now, it's actually had a pretty nice run up. It's got a little bit of resistance just above where we are right now, right there. Um, so what is going on with Disney right now? Obviously, Disney, movies, streaming service, everything is looking good. Last couple of earnings reports have not been absolutely fantastic. So what do we want to talk about with the streaming services and specifically the streaming services stocks? I'm going to talk about a stock that is a short sell opportunity, despite the fact that Kathy Wood has been reportedly buying the heck out of the stock after earnings were demolished. I believe, and this is this is my opinion, I don't believe that Disney earnings are going to be fantastic. I think that the streaming services have been incredibly competitive. And we're going to talk about Netflix also in a second. When Netflix starts to talk about that, they are going to start putting commercials or ads into their streaming service. That tells you that the streaming service model needs help right now, and it's adapting. So the weakest players in this industry right now I think by a mile is Roku. So if we take, we're going to take a look at Disney. We're going to take a look Disney stock, Netflix stock, and Roku stock. And I believe Roku stock is a short sale, despite the fact that Kathy Wood is looking to buy it right now. So Disney will really clearly above this level for me right now. It's right around this level. I'll be looking at Disney after earnings. If, if it's above one ten, if it stays below that level, I'm not going to look at it. Netflix, the other streaming service, actually looking pretty darn good, still consolidating right here. And what's interesting about this. Netflix trade right now is this was the last the earnings two earnings ago where it got absolutely clobbered. That's the gap fill up in the 333 area. Now, do I think that Netflix is going to go from 230 all the way up to 330? I don't think it's going to rally a hundred dollars, but I do and I am looking for Netflix to break out of the 230 level and then look to start working a position above 230. So those are two areas: Disney over 110. Netflix over 230. So again, we're prepping this week of trading and setting the price levels so that as Monday, Wednesday, and Friday unfold and we're working through these live streams together, uh, we can start to talk about the price action as we're mapping it out right now. Now, <clears throat> the big thing here is we're setting very definitive levels that prices need to get through. If they never get to those levels or trade down, I'm not putting the trade on. So that's very, very important that you know once in a while we get somebody say you were wrong. But it, it never hit the price we wanted it to, so we never got in it. And that's a very important thing because a lot of people say, well, if we like it and we want to buy it, why don't we just buy that stock right now? It's because of risk reward. It's one thing to say, I like the stock. It's another thing to say, if I risk X amount, is the reward worth it? And if those stocks are hitting a wall of sellers, I want feedback from the market that they get through there so we expand the profit potential for that risk that we have to take on the trade. So now we're going to take a look at Roku and on the other side of the market. So we got Roku over here. Kathy Wood's still buying Roku. You can see this is actually from about two weeks ago, but it's still true. And I'm going to show you why. If we go over to Roku stock and we see what Roku has done recently, 
Roku actually had a monstrously bad earnings. So it went from here all the way down to here. That's a really big move after earnings. And now you can actually see that the stock rallied and very similar to what we're talking about in Netflix, it actually filled the gap here. And you can see it's actually down a little bit this morning. And I'm going to pull this up on the weekly charge just to give everybody some context of where this stock is. It's at a pretty significant level here. If this stock cannot hold this level right now, which is right around the $80 level, look at where we're talking about for the next level, all the way down in the low 30s. So this $80 level in Roku is a monstrously significant level. It's where buyers have stepped up and held the stock quite a few times recently. If Roku and specifically these other streaming services do not report good earnings, Roku could implode. They had a bad earnings report before this was going on. It's going to be super interesting now to see how this unfolds. So for me personally, again, I understand, I like to short sell, whether it's with puts or just straight out stocks. I trade the stock. I very rarely buy puts because I don't like to have time expiration against me on these particular kind of plays where I think they're a little bit longer term. I am looking for Roku to go down, and especially if it cannot hold this $80 level. So let's flip to the other side of that. And let's say that you're a buyer of Roku. You need to now know that $80, which is pretty much exactly where it is right now, is a very significant level in Roku. If it breaks that level, you really now, before you need to make that decision, you need to decide what you plan to do if that stock cannot hold $80. The price action in Roku, really interesting at that spot. So you, again, act like a pro and make plans before you need to make it because that's a really big level. So what I want to do now is I want to go through some other tech stocks that were on fire last week that should be in play this week. Price action was absolutely amazing. We just now have to determine what is the right entry and exit for these stocks. So we're going to head back on over to um, the daily charts. So obviously we talked about coin. Net stock is another one. You can see net actually filled the gap or it's pretty darn close to that gap. And again, you can see how much the stock has rallied in a very, very short period of time. And again, if we just do this here, a 66% rally. 66% rally in eight days in net, N-E-T. So if we're thinking about buying this stock, what are the odds of it continuing higher for the risk that we have to take? So for net right now, we're talking about we need that stock to cool off a little bit to give us a better risk reward. So remember, if we're making a deal, you're a money manager, we're making a deal on I want to allocate and put some money to work. What are the odds of it hitting my target up to the upside versus hitting a target to the downside? A 66% move in eight days is a big move. So if this was the profit potential of what it normally does, that's how much it's already, that's how much is what's left. So we need to expand that profit potential, which means the stock just needs to pull back a couple of days. So net and AFRM, very similar to what Tesla stock just did. Tesla already started the pullback. I'm looking for those two stocks to pull back to increase the potential. If that happens in net, then we're looking at this level up here around 76. And you can see it's not that far from there now. So I wanted to pull back a little bit. So net is one of those stocks. Unity Software, which actually, again, you got to know your earnings has earnings coming up tomorrow, right at a breakout level as well. Now, the most exciting thing about this is there's really no big resistance level here. So if we kind of hop on over here and just do a really quick level for where we would expect a profit target, we're looking at a potential profit target up here right around the 69.50 level, which is a pretty good move for Unity Software. But just, again, be aware that you have earnings coming up. Another one is Asana. So we're starting to see a lot of these stocks that are in trading ranges hitting the levels now where they're right on the verge of the breakout, looking for them to move to the upside. TTD is another one that has really not been in play at all for a while. You can see we keep working this, working this, working this. But now the stock has actually broken this level right here. As soon as you break a downtrend, you have to start to draw that box. And you can see now it closed out of that box. And you can see that earnings are coming out here on TTD as well. So it's very, very important right now. One last thing I want to talk about, and then we're going to talk about these stocks. Okay, so I want to go over here, which is this the CPI report, okay? This is going to be gigantic. And as we just said before, setting the tone for the Fed for the week. So if we scroll down a little bit, jobs data from last week, absolutely on fire. Now, that sounds awesome, right? Jobs on fire. That's the whole reason everybody's saying we're not in a recession, right? Well, 
the hotter that job market and the more inflation stays higher, that's going to cause the Fed to actually raise rates, maybe even by three quarters of a basis points again. So we keep rising interest rates that might put a stall in some of these tech stocks, which is not happening at the moment. So right now, is it just a matter of when or is the market so strong and so everybody can't wait to buy that the inflation data does not matter? That's up for debate. And we've been having a lot of healthy debates about that. So what do we want to pay attention to? Knowing that we have a lot of earnings this week, blue chip stocks, tech stocks coming out this week, a lot of stocks at um, right at resistance levels ahead of earnings that got to break out of some of these levels. It really comes down to making sure that any trades you take this week, they're not too far extended, which decreases risk reward, and they're not resting right at a breakout level, and they're not reporting earnings that same day that you look that trade on. Now, that sounds like a lot, right? Well, it's not. You just need to be aware. Is there anything I need to know before I hit that buy button? Before you buy that stock, what do you need to know? Do I want to buy ahead of earnings? How far has it recently gone? And is it resting at a place where sellers keep stopping it? If none of those three things are in place, then we can feel pretty good that there's going to be a chance that's going to move in that favor. So there's a lot to look at this week. We gave you solar stocks today and a big list of solar stocks. We talked about growth stocks, specifically tech stocks and semiconductor stocks. And then we worked our way into some other tech stocks that are resting right at a level. The last thing I want to talk about is crude oil and how it's affecting those stocks. So if we take a look at crude and go out to the continuous contract, you can see that 95 was a big level. And you can see it's all the way down at 88 now, and it's actually continuing to push down. What's interesting, and one of the favorite groups of stocks that I like to trade and has specifically been Chevron and Exxon, big move here after earnings, sold off, held the support level perfectly, and had what we call a bullish U-turn. Crude oil and crude oil stocks or stocks related to the energy prices right now have been a lot more inconsistent than they were two months ago. They have been a little bit more shorter term price action for me, have not been trading them on the longer term because as crude oil keeps going down, they've had a little bit harder time finding the bid. So the last thing I want to point out for you today, because this is going to be setting up the whole week, is the sector rotation and the list of stocks that match the big criteria heading into this week. So these are the two things that are going to be the power for the week. So if we take a look over here and we go into this, you can see how we're coming into the week. Technology stocks, as we just talked about, still maintaining the strong push for the week. But what's interesting here is consumer communication services and consumer cyclical. Communication services have been bouncing off of a stock that we have not talked about that much. Elon Musk actually in the news with this stock, but we got a really interesting breakout in this stock last week, which is Twitter. So again, all we have to do is pay attention to what the smart money is doing. You can see finally we got through this 41 level and we did it with some kind of significance. Meta as well came off the lows. It's still stuck in this box. You can see after earnings. But now Meta we have right at this 174 level, which is roughly about $6 above from where we are right now. So that's just breaking down the sectors. If we go into the stocks with stacked order flow, and I want to break this down. You can see the list is roughly 40 stocks right now. Here's what we want to do. We want to go in here and we want to sort this list by sector. Now, this is very important. Whether you're getting this from me every day or whether you're getting, you're going to do this work on your own, you need to know where does smart money have attention because that's where my attention and where my money should be. So what we're about to look at right now on this setup, on this spreadsheet is where has the smart money been stacking their money? Where have they been stashing their money? And how can we piggyback that ride? So remember, these are ideas that meet the perfect criteria, but then we have to still determine is risk reward good right now? In other words, if we buy it right now, is there a better chance of it hitting our profit target than our stop loss? So you want to take a screenshot of this so you have this list uh, for coming into today. So you can see basic materials. I will tell you that these guys have been pretty strong, NUE specifically. Communication services, again, AMC had a really big move on Friday and had some news and you can see we're getting some follow through. So we might have a little bit of a meme stock uh, move here in the market again. So working our way down, you can see a couple of consumer cyclicals. That's mostly off of CVNA, which had news last week, a very, very volatile stock right now. Um, not for the faint of heart. You can see the kind of move that it had. You can see it's actually here. Very, very active on the um, interesting uh, ideas. Uh, but here's the big thing. Look at technology dominating this list. 
So I just want to get this across. And you can see the stocks over here, quite a few of them. D-Dog is another one. D-Dog and Snow are actually resting right at breakout levels here this morning as well. So we'll take a look at that. So you can see D-Dog with some room to go and Snow with some room to go, which is actually just perked above that list. So I'm just going to pull this up one more time. You can take a screenshot of this just to give you an idea of what's in the list. Okay. So here's the big deal with the tech stocks this week. Okay. Tech stocks are all resting right on the precipice of breakouts. The market is resting right on the precipice of breakouts. And I'll just show you that again in the SPY right now. And we'll take a look at the Qs as well. Okay. Right there. And if we go to the QQQ, okay, the QQQ is actually showing relative strength, but now we're at this resistance level. So here's why this week is going to be a critical week in the markets. This week is when the market is going to determine, are we done with the stock market crash of 2022? Or have we just experienced a bear market rally ahead of the new inflation data that's coming out that will now see the market roll over and head to the downside like Michael Burry has been talking about um, for the last six months? This is a critical week in the market for the remainder of 2022. That's how important the market is. So remember, a lot of the ideas we just discussed are right at those launching points. They're either going to break out and give us some phenomenal trades or those sellers are going to come back right at those prices. So we just gave you a really big list of hot stocks, some of them in growth stocks, the majority of them in tech stocks. There's a lot going on. So here's the thing, the mindset for heading into this week, knowing we have that big data coming out at the end of the week, the CPI data, knowing we have some blue chip earnings coming out this week. This could be a week where we might be trading a little bit more for cash flow, letting that data unfold, and then looking for the bigger trades after that. So the more aggressive stocks that I'm going to be looking to buy this week are already through those levels where they took out the sellers, and now there's some opportunity to get long and have a pretty good day in the, a pretty good week in the stock market. So we've covered a lot today. You might want to watch this video more than one, one more time. If there's anything that we discussed today that you want a follow-up question on, uh, be sure that you um, leave a comment below the video. If this is your first time to the channel, um, please do me a favor, subscribe and hit that like button. I would really, really appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. Um, and I just want to say, look, there's a lot going on. This has been amazing, amazing five or six weeks of trading. Here's the challenge I want to leave you with. And it's a big question I have for everybody in our boot camp right now. We have a big coaching call tonight. What is holding you back? What part of trading is holding you back? What part of the stock market did you not recognize and take advantage over the last five weeks? That's the number one thing you should be focusing on this week. And I promise the more questions you ask about what you believe you need to learn, I can virtually guarantee that the answer will come to you. Maybe it'll come from me if you ask me a question on one of these calls. All right. Have an awesome day, everybody. Let's make it an awesome week. A lot of good stuff coming on. You might want to rewatch this video one more time and take a big list of that stocks that we gave you and write them all down for the coming week. Have an awesome day, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it.